we started with the, the, the uh, beginning of the church. And then as we went through the beginning of the church, we, we see that there's a day of man, and uh, then there's the day of the rapture of the church, and when the Antichrist is going to, the tribulation, which is when the Antichrist is going to reign. And then the next thing that we come to now is the millennial, the thousand year millennial reign. Now, millennial is not mentioned in the scripture as millennial, but it's a thousand years, and that, and that, uh, uh, that, of course, that means millennial. So we're looking now, we're at that point, through all the book of Revelation, we're to the point of the beginning of the millennial reign of Christ. Last week we, or last time, yeah, last Sunday we studied that it was at the end of the tribulation period uh, that the Lord's going to come back and at the battle of Armageddon, he's going to put the enemies. You know, he's going to put them where they belong. He's going to take care of business. And, the, and then the millennial reign will set up at the end of, of the tribulation. Right at the end of the tribulation. Then we, we pick that up in, in chapter number 20. Here's what happened. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key to, of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now this is right after the battle of Armageddon. This is after the fowls have had their feast upon the kings and the uh, the men of this world after millions have died in that battle. Verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Now he bound him, and he cast him into the bottomless pit. Now that's what's going to happen to Satan uh, during the millennial reign. That's where he's going to be. Uh, the beast and the false prophet are in the lake of fire, and the devil is going to be uh, bound and, and put into the bottomless pit, and he's going to be there for a thousand years. Verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. Now, we're going to cover this much tonight, and then that may be all we do tonight. But as, as Satan, at the end of the millennial reign, is bound, then Christ sets up his reign upon this earth now for uh, and and this part of prophecy has always been very intriguing to me uh, the part of the millennial reign I understand all that leads up to it I understand the terror I understand the sufferings of uh, millions of people because of their unbelief and I understand how that the antichrist and how that the the one world government and the one world religion is going to rule for that seven years, and it's gone now, but we'll get it back maybe if we need it. Uh, but but to, to understand that the Lord, and, and, and we believe this, is going to come back without, you know, without guns or swords or any such thing as that, uh, the Lord's going to come back, and with His Word, He's going to, he's going to uh, fight the battle of Armageddon for the nation of Israel, and it's going to be won by Him. We know that the, that the devil does not win. We know that Jesus wins. And when he sets up his millennial reign, this is going to be a time on earth such as we have never known in our lifetimes. We never will until this comes about. Now, there's people that, uh, that say that we are living in the millennium now. That's not, that's not so, not so at all. Uh, there's people that uh, say that we're living in the tribulation now. Well, that's not so at all. We're not. We are, uh, you know, we are waiting for the rapture of the church. We're waiting for the... Uh, marriage supper of the Lamb. And we're waiting for the battle of Armageddon to be fought and won by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the next thing you and I look forward to is what? The rapture of the church. And then after that, what do we look forward to? The millennial reign where we come back and reign as kings and priests upon this earth. Now our, I believe that our reigning upon the earth will be according to what we did down here for the Lord. I believe that will be pro part of our uh, rewards is if, if God can trust us with uh, you know God can trust us with many things he uh, may let us rule over many things but all the people of the earth <clears throat> that that are here are going to be governed by the Lord he's going to be the supreme government it's all it's going to be his day it's going to be his kingdom and every everyone will will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ now you and I won't have a problem with that but now, a thousand years is a long time, and millions and millions from the earth will have been destroyed. 
the earth will have the curse removed from it. So the, the curse will be no more uh, on, this, on this natural earth. There will be no curse upon this world. And so men will live as they lived in the Garden of Eden as far as the, the uh, perfection of the earth before uh, Eve sinned. So that'll be the you know that'll be the way that this earth is shaped up after during the millennial reign, and so you think about it when if you lived in a world and I lived in a world where the devil wasn't he's where's he at he's in the he's in the bottomless pit he is bound he cannot be loosed uh, there's a seal set upon him he can't get out now you think about what a world it would be in if we lived in that world where the devil had no influence in this world. Now, that would be a tremendous, you know, that would be a tremendous way to live. Well, that's the way it's going to be in the millennial reign. And so for a thousand years, men uh, will be on this earth, and there will be a great population explosion during that time. Now, it'll be, you know, it'll be people that are, that have, that have, that are alive on the earth when the millennial sets in, and, and a perfect environment. And they will have children, and their children will have, will have children. So there is going to be a, you know, a reproductive process upon the earth during the millennial reign. And when those things come to pass, all these people that are born upon the earth will live in that perfect environment. And they will grow up under no influence of the devil. But the Bible says the heart is, is deceitfully, it's, it's wicked. A man's heart without God is, is wicked. And, and without the Lord, that's just exactly like it always has been. Men in themselves are incapable of, of, of getting to God without Jesus. Now, people that come up during that time, I believe with all my heart that they'll be able to uh, get into the family of God by being, by being born again. And if they'll believe on that person that's ruling and reigning upon this earth, if they'll believe upon him, then they can be saved. And they can, you know, they can uh, go to heaven when we leave in the millennial reign. They can go in heaven. But now you think about this world with no influence of the devil. You would think that was in the perfect environment, you would think that everyone would be perfect, would you not? Now God's children are going to be because we've already, uh, we've already, uh, Christ paid our sin debt, and we've been saved by God's grace, and we're like being have already been made like unto Him uh, after the after the rapture. But the folks that are that are grow up in this world, the folks that are born into this world, are born. People won't see there. There's no death. Uh, there there's no death because the thousand years people will live, and so there's no there'll be no there'll be no death because what's the cause of death? It's the devil. Ultimately, sin is the cause of death. So there'll be no sin, so there'll be no death. So in a thousand years' time, multitudes will uh, will be raised upon this earth. So you say, well, now you know why that you and I will have to rule and reign with Christ. Now, of course, he can handle it all, but he's going to let us be a mayor, a governor, uh, you know, maybe a... Maybe whatever God's got for you, but, but we'll all be kings and priests, as the Bible says, in this earth. So we'll have all, you know, we'll have authority over, over the things of this world. But Jesus will be the complete authority. He'll be the supreme authority. And as he's reigning on the earth, there's going to be a, 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 a group of people that are going to rebel. You say, how in the world could they rebel against God? How did Satan rebel against God in the first place? What brought it into his heart to rebel against the Lord? And, and I, I can't answer that question. But I can answer the question about man because man's heart is, is uh, exceedingly wicked, the Bible tells us, and that is the heart of man. And it won't change. And as these millions of people raise up, and they, they, they will, they will uh, not bow to Christ. They won't bow to his authority. And it's and the and we, I asked somebody. I said, "What about sin?" And I've always had a you know I've always thought, "What about sin? Will with the devil not present? Will there will there still be will there still be evil? There will be evil, but it will not because of rebellion of people against God Himself. There'll be evil, but evil will not be tolerated. 
Now, I, don't, I, I, I can't explain all that, but I understand it. So you just have to uh, try to dig in that and try to understand that for yourself. But evil that there is will not be tolerated it, you know, just re- because, uh, because God's going to reign and he's going to rule this earth. Now, you and I won't know evil. We, we won't be, you know, there will be no evil in us because we are made like unto the Son of God and there's no evil in him. There's no way for him to sin, just like there won't be any way for us to, because we'll have a different, a whole different, uh, body and a whole different mindset and, and, and so we'll be likened to the Son of God. But just think about it. People that are raised up during the millennium in a perfect environment, they're still going to rise up against God. Now, as, as, we, as we have studied this, in verse number 3, and ca- the devil's cast into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me that the devil, even though he's bound for a thousand years, even though that he was defeated at the cross of Calvary, he still believes that he can overrun the Lord. He still believes that he can overrun Christ. So after a thousand years of him being in the bottomless pit, and I believe to prove to all mankind that God truly is, you know, God truly is the true God, the supreme God. He'll be let loose for a little season upon the earth. And what will he do in that little season? He'll, he'll be loose for a, a little season and he'll go about to, to deceive the nations and to try to bring them under his authority. And, and folks, there'll be people that'll flock after him by the millions. There'll be people that are in rebellion against God There'll be people that will flock to the devil and to his, uh, you know, to his uh, uh, rebellion himself. And the devil, you know, you'd think the devil would learn, wouldn't you? But he's the devil and he won't until he is cast into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophet is. There he'll be for eternity. But I'll tell you something, the devil is a, is a strong force. He's a powerful force in this world today. He rules the the. Uh, you know, he rules the air around us. That's his kingdom, the air around us. And we'll, uh, we'll decide, we'll see what's going to happen with that in, a, in another service or two. But after he is loose for a little season, uh, they'll come against God, and, and God, the, the battle of Gog and Magog, and God, will with, with God with, with his voice will defeat the devil. And, uh, you know, there'll not be a whole much, that battle ain't going to last long, just, just uh, you know, maybe a few minutes. But he will, he will uh, then defeat Satan forever and forever. Let's read on just a little bit and give us a little more light. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, this is you and I that are, that are reigning with Christ. That's what we just told you a minute ago. We'll reign with Christ for a thousand years. Who? All of those that, are, that have been martyred, all those that have been saved, everybody up, in, up until this point of the rapture will rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, those that are are dead that died in sin, those that died in their wickedness will not be raised during the, you know, during the millennium. They won't be on this earth. It's where they're going to be. They're going to be in hell, and that's where they're going to spend that thousand years. They'll, they'll be there. And so they'll not have presence upon this earth. They'll not see, we'll not see them again until the great white throne of judgment. Now you think about it. If you know someone that's lost, and they're lost without God, and they have, no, they have no hope. If they die in their sin, if the rapture took place tomorrow, it'll be a thousand and seven years before they are ever seen again. But they will be seen again at the great white throne of judgment when they stand before the great God, and, uh, and he tells them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. And then they will be cast in, uh, into, back into hell. And then death and hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's serious business. So you and I will reign with the Lord for a thousand years, but the rest of the dead 
Live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So, kings and priests, that you are. Matter of fact, uh, as, as far as our standing goes, that's what we are today. Because when the, when the millennial sets in, that's what we're going to be. Now, and, and, and as we are <coughs> kings and priests, that is governors. And the, and the Bible very plainly tells us that that's what we're going to do. We're going to be kings and priests that reign with him. <coughs> well, I must have took it with me. Now, now we read about, uh, again about Satan. In verse number 7, And when the thousand years are expired, now that's a thousand years, he's been bound. Where has he been at? He's been in the bottomless pit. Satan shall be loosed out of prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number, to battle the number of him is as the sand of the sea. Now that's the number of the army of the devil uh, that he's going to deceive, and they're going to gather together. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now, right back there in Jerusalem. This is where this will, uh, will take place there in Jerusalem. And they're going to gather around. Where they, see, that's where Jesus is going to sit on his throne, is in Jerusalem. He'll sit on his throne there. And as the, the thousands of the, as of the sand of the sea will gather, encircle the camp of, of the Lord, and, here's, and God will simply do this. He'll call down fire out of heaven, and it's going to devour them. And that's all it's going to take. God's going, he, he, he's given man change. He's given man plenty of space for repentance. And even in that day, there'll be space for repentance, yet there'll be many, many there'll be people, I believe, that will, uh, that will bow to Christ. Every knee shall bow. One way or the other, every knee's going to bow. But in the millennial reign, there'll be those that'll bow to Christ and go with Him, but there's going to be an untold uh, millions of people that, you know, that are going to uh, go with the devil. And so that shows me that man's heart is exceedingly wicked. That shows me that the devil... Uh, does not, you know, is not going to give up. He still thinks in a thousand years' time when he gets out, he's going to, he's going to go to battle with the Lord again, and he's going to win. But he don't. How do I know he don't? Because the Bible tells us he don't. He's defeated right here in the battle of Gog and Magog. Now, and the devil that deceived them <clears throat> was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and forever. Now, after the battle of Gog and Magog, the devil is going to be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophets are. Friend, I'll tell you, there is a place worse than hell. Now, if men die today, that's where they go. They go to hell. But the, pl the place that is worse than hell is the lake of fire. And so there's, if you can imagine people dying and going to hell where there's wailing and weeping and gnashing of teeth in a place of darkness... And to spend eternity there, that's a horrible, a horrible thing. That's an un, you know, just unbearable that, to think that people would go there. But then that is all going to be cast into the lake of fire. And where they'll be tormented day and night forever and forever. Where will you and I be? What will, you know, wh where will you and I be? We'll be with the Lord. And, and, then, uh, and, and then the Lord will come. He'll purify the earth and the and and that part comes after this, and we'll study that later. But friend, I'm glad to say to you tonight, I'm glad I know the Lord. I'm glad that when the thousand-year millennial reign sets in, and, and I, I think about that, what, how's that going to be? What's this earth going to be like? And you know, the, uh, the, the lion and the lamb coming together, kids can play with snakes. <laughs> Nothing will harm them. I don't know if they're going to be there or not. I... <laughs> yeah, and, and they, and, but, but that's the way it's going to be. And, and the best I can understand, it'll be a time where, where animals as well as man will eat of the fruit of the earth. 
And so I'm not sure there'll be any T-bone steaks in, in, in the millennial reign. You'll have to come up with somebody else to ask that question. But, but it will be as it was in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden, uh, Adam and Eve were basically vegetarians uh, because there was no killing going on until, until God slew the first animals to make them coverings of fur uh, of skins. That's when, the, uh, you know, that's when the killing of animals began. But it doesn't matter, and, and people say, well, I don't think I like it. No, I will tell you something, it's heaven. Whatever it's going to be, it's the millennial reign, it's heaven. And anything that goes on, you and I are going to, you're going, you and I are going to be in love with it. Amen? It, we're going to be perfectly content and happy for a thousand years. Nothing's going to bother you. There's not one thing going to bother you after you leave this world and go to the presence of God. Throughout all eternity, through the millennial reign, there is not one thing going to bother you. You're not going to ever have one more worry. Uh, you down here on this earth, and, and uh, there can't nothing go wrong in your life during the millennial reign or thereafter. Nothing can go wrong. You can't have, you can't have an evil thought. Now think about that a minute. Does that not intrigue you? That, that, is, that has always been such an intriguing thing. As, as much as I love this, you know, I, I like this earth like it is. I, I really do. I enjoy getting out in it. I enjoy seeing the, the things of this earth. But to imagine it without a curse... And, uh, you know, the, uh, no briars, no, you know, no earthquakes, nothing like that ever takes place on, in, during that time. And then that in itself will be all destroyed one day, even after that. That's all going to be destroyed. It's going to melt away with the fervent heat, the Bible tells us. And we'll study that later. But to live on this earth where there's no sin, there's not a cough. You noticed I hadn't done that a whole lot today. Thank the Lord. And... Uh, and there, there'll be no, you know, there'll be no sneezing because of allergies, because you won't be allergic to anything. If you like flowers and you can't, and now you can't get around flowers because they make you sneeze, you can sniff them all day long, and they won't make you sneeze. And and just the little things, you know, you, I'm I'm assuming that the the serpents will walk upright again, because the curse will be lifted, and and the rattlesnakes will walk with feet. Now, preacher, you're reading a lot into that. I'm just saying, you know, you believe that or not. You, but, but if the curse is lifted, that was, what, that was what put the devil in the dust. The serpent in the dust was, was uh, God's curse upon the, upon the serpent. So the serpents will uh, probably walk upright again. And you say, I'll be terrified of that, preacher. No, in this mind, in your mind right now, you'll be terrified of that. But in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the mind of Christ, in the, in the day of the millennial, there won't nothing terrify you. If you're afraid of the dark now, you won't be afraid of the dark then. Uh, if it got dark, and, 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 but the, the darkness will pass away. But, but if, if you're claustrophobic, you wouldn't be claustrophobic anymore. I could ride elevators all day long and it would not bother me. Never have a thought of that. Uh, what's your greatest fear? Somebody, what's your greatest fear? Speak up. Heights. Oh, you'll be able to tie, climb to the tallest mountain and look off and just enjoy that view, and it won't bother you a bit. It won't make your legs tingle like you think you're going to fall off of there. I know I'm not afraid of heights, but I know that feeling. Well, what's somebody else's greatest fear? Oh, you ain't no, nobody fear nobody feared of nothing. What is it? You just can't think of it right now, but you'll go out of the church and think, boy, I should have said that. I, I should have said this. Not, well, we don't explain that one, sister. You would now? Yeah. But, but then you won't have to worry about that. And Sister Betsy's afraid of treadmill. I just learned that today. She's afraid of treadmill. You'll have to get her to explain all that. But if there's a treadmill in, in the millennium, you can get on and run all day and you won't be a bit afraid of falling off or getting dizzy or nothing else. But of, of all your fears, you'll have no fear. Uh, you'll not have no fear of slipping and falling. You'll have, I mean, none of these things are, are going to be fearful to you during the millennial reign. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll never have an argument with another human being. Your temper will never rise during the millennial reign. Now you say, well, preacher, how can that all be? I'm telling you, it's because of, of our change when we leave this world and when we get our, 
when we get our glorified bodies with the Lord Jesus Christ and we're made like unto Him, that's the only way you can attempt to understand these things is to know that you're going to be like Christ. And we believe Christ to be perfect. And in Him we are perfect. And that will be our citizenship as being perfect like unto Christ. So none of these things are going to bother us. Never have, a, never have an argument. Uh, never worry about anything. Uh, life will be, as we so call it, happy-go-lucky, which, you know, is just a... Just a way of saying it's going to be, everything's going to be just perfect. We'll rule and reign with Christ. And listen, there'll be, pl there'll be plenty for us to do, but we're going to enjoy doing it. Now, I'm serious about the thing of being over, you know, people will, will gain leadership over, over communities, over cities, over, you know, there, there's going to have to be a lot of governing people. Now, Christ can do it without us, but he chooses because... Because it says that we'll reign with him. Christ don't need us, but he's going to use us because it says we will reign with him. And, and therefore we believe that we will, that we will have responsibilities over, over numbers of people as, as the government, as Christ is the governor. He is the chief government. And under his direction, uh, he will use us to govern. And so, there, you know, there go, of course it won't be a burden to us to do it because we'll be doing just exactly what the Lord will want us to do, and it'll all be, it'll all be wonderful there. And, and there'll be, uh, you can use your ma imagination uh, and, and do a far better job than I can try to tell you what's going to happen in the millennial reign, but it's going to be perfect. Well, how did Adam and Eve live in the Garden of Eden? Uh, they never had a worry or care or nothing else. All Adam had to do was tend the garden, but God gave him something to do. He, all he had to do was tend that garden. That's what he had to do. But God, see, God knew that man needed to be busy, so he gave Adam something to do. And in the millennial reign of Christ, you and I will have something to do. God will, will use us in the millennial reign. I want God to use me here. I want, I want to be of service to God here so that when I uh, go into the millennial reign with him, he can use me there also. And, and, and folks that can't be used of God here, he can't use them much in the millennial. They'll be used, but not much. If they, high, if they multiply their talents, as the uh, parable of the talents goes, as if they multiply their, what God gives them to do down here, or they take the one talent God gives them and hide that, and it just remains one talent, then if they multiply those talents here, then God will use that multiply in the millennial, I believe. But if they just take charge of that one thing and, that's, you know, and hide that and don't use it for the glory of God, then God can't use them much in eternity as far as the millennial reign goes, to rule and reign with him. Now, that, uh, that's, uh, that's all you say. Well, that's far out there, preacher. It is real, though. It, it is the truth. And, and I believe w n the, the big picture and part of it all is to be seen because the Bible, this is what the Bible says about the millennium, what I've just read to you here in Revelation. And, of course, there's a, a few more scriptures <coughs> over in Isaiah. And there's some more prophetic scripture, but, but this is all we know about what, and there's going to be so much more. Our minds can't grab a hold of that. You're, you try to think of that, and your mind can't grab a hold of that. If we knew the whole picture, our minds couldn't take any of it. So God gives up us enough about this millennial reign to know that it's going to be just perfect. We're going to be with him. Uh, we're going to be free from, from any problems ever faced in life. None of that's going to happen, and you and I are going to rule and reign with him. Now, as, as, as Satan is doomed and cast into the lake of fire, here's the next, the next part of it. I don't, I'm not going to fool with that no more. But here's the next part of it after the millennial reign is that the, the dead, both small and great, verse number 11, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. <coughs> And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the great, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Now, the dead are, is going to be judged. All the remaining dead that have died throughout the, uh, throughout the, the 6,000 years, or about that time, all of those that, are, that died that were not in faith, that didn't believe God, that were not saved, uh, all those that died not in faith are going to spend that thousand years in hell. And then 
they're going to stand before God at the great white throne of judgment. You and I may be there to, to witness that, probably be there to witness that. And, but we will not have a part in that as far as we won't stand. I won't, I, we, remember, we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The lost, small and great, are going to stand before God at the great white throne of judgment. And they, too, are going to be judged, and they're going to be judged according to their works. Now, and the sea gave up the dead which are in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So every man according to what he did here on this earth. These, these evil, wicked, vile people that never had a thought of Christ or of salvation are going to stand before God and God's going to judge them for their works. But guess what? That person or persons or whomever, how many it may be, and I know, listen, I know folks that have, that have lived their life this way. Come to church faithful to the church, but never come to know the Lord. They're also going to stand at the great white throne of judgment. And they're going to, they're going to make their plea before God in heaven on the great white throne and say, well, I went to church every Sunday. I paid tithes every Sunday. And uh, I worked at the church. I taught Sunday school. Maybe even people say, well, I preached in the pulpit. And those things, and they're going, to, he's, they're going to stand before God. And he look in the book, and the name's not going to be in the book of life because why? It wasn't because it, they didn't try hard. It was because that they never asked Christ in their heart to save them. And so they, lost without God, will stand before God, and he'll look at them with, with, with the, the judgment of an almighty, all holy, all righteous God, after, after he has given man every opportunity to come to know him in the free pardon of sin, and he'll look at them and he'll say, <coughs> depart, from ye, depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. And they'll be cast in the lake of fire for eternity. My friend, that's a sad state of affairs. And after all they've spent those thousand years in torment to stand before God and be judged for their works, and there's not a one, there's not one person that can stand before God and say, Lord, I've done the best I could, even though they did it. That should let them into heaven. God, God said, you must be born again. All must come through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is not of works. Why? Because at the great white throne of judgment, if they had earned their way in, they could stand before the great white throne of judgment and boast that I worked hard enough to get to heaven and I didn't have to go God's way. And that's why it says not of works. And people here today that think that salvation is by their works and by their deeds are, are looking at God and they're telling him, I don't need your way. I'll, I can work hard enough for you and I don't need Jesus. And that's plainly what they're saying, how sad that is. And he will say, depart from me, you that work in this God never knew, knew you. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now that's where we're stopping at tonight. We've covered the, the entire chapter. We'll cover the millennial reign as best as I can, as much as I, uh, you know, and, and there's more. You can, I can get into more detail uh, with other scriptures, but I, just, I want you to get what the, uh, the thrust of the message in that being that you and I one day will reign with Christ upon this earth in a perfect environment and, and no more heartbreak. And all of that just, all that just amazing to me, and I can't wait for the day uh, that we do that. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Pray for your lost friends. <coughs> Pray for your lost loved ones. And pray for your family members that may be away from God. They're going to heaven, but you want them to reign and receive a crown also. So pray that the Lord uh, would help us. And, and pray for the church. Pray God help us as we go out of here in the rapture. The, the, you know, if, if Jesus comes, and I believe he's coming soon, but, but you and I in the church that go out in the rapture, you know, pray to God help us to be faithful to him as a church till he comes. Father, we thank you, Lord, for thy word tonight. And God, even though there's a lot about this I don't understand, Lord, there's a lot about this that a lot of people have more knowledge of than I do. I do understand, God, that we're going to rule and reign with you for a thousand years. And I do understand, Lord, that the final judgment, God, that you judge is righteous judgment. Lord, for those that are lost today, 
God touch them, I pray, with a spirit of conviction that they don't have to stand at the great white throne of judgment. And God, help us as a church to be faithful to you. Do you come in Jesus' name? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight.